In this question, we are given a function f of x defined right here, and then we're given this sort of strange interval. We know the lower limit of the interval is zero, but then the upper limit is some mystery number b, and it is basically our job to find the value of b. And then we need to do that under the condition that the average value of the function is equal to three. So that right there is telling us that the average value, f average, if you will, is equal to three. Now, of course, we have the equation that we use to find the average value of a function. What's weird about this scenario is that, again, they gave us the average value. We're not looking for it. So what we're gonna do is actually plug three right in there for the average value. And we're gonna set this equal to one over our upper limit, which is b, we don't know that, minus this a. Now, a is simply the lower limit. So again, in this case, the lower limit is zero. So we'll plug that in right there. And then that's multiplied by the integral from the lower limit of zero to the upper limit of b of our function. Our function is defined in the question right here, so we can fill that in as two plus six x minus three x squared. And then we are integrating with respect to x. So we do dx here. Now we can clean this up a tad because b minus zero is just b. So we'll say one over b, and then that's gonna be multiplied by the integral. Now we could perhaps go ahead and begin to perform the integral, but it might also be easier to just get this one over b canceled out. So why don't we go ahead and just multiply both sides of the equation by b over one, which is essentially b. And that'll be nice because that'll cancel those b's right there. The left side will become 3b. And so what I guess that does is it sort of frees up the right-hand side so that it's just an integral. Now we have to evaluate this relatively simple integral. Luckily, this doesn't require any fancy techniques, just some basic integration rules. So here we go. The integral of 2 with respect to x is 2x. We have to integrate 6x. Remember that's 6x to the power of 1, so we're going to add 1 to the power and then divide by that new power. Same thing over here. We're going to add one to the power and then divide by the new power. And then we're gonna be integrating this from zero to b. So those are our limits again. And maybe before we do this, we can simplify a little bit. Here we have six divided by two, so that's going to be three. And then three divided by three is going to be one. So we can just clean this up a little bit. This will just be one x cubed. And then over here, this is gonna be three x squared. So that's a little nicer, and then don't forget the 3b over here. Okay, so we've integrated, and then you'll recall that you have to take the upper limit of integration, and you're gonna be plugging that in first. And you have to plug it in for all of these b's. So this becomes a relatively enjoyable experience. So we're gonna have two times b plus three b squared, and then minus b cubed. And then technically, of course, we also have to plug in the lower limit. Now notice here, when you plug the lower limit, in for all of these x's, all three terms are still going to equal zero. So that's kind of a nice feature of this question. And now it is our job to solve this for b. And maybe what we can do is set everything equal to zero. So let's just take out these brackets. We don't need this minus zero. We can actually add the b cubed to both sides. We will subtract three b squared from both sides and then we will subtract 2b from both sides. So the left-hand side is a bit of a jumble. It's gonna have a positive b cubed. We're gonna have a minus 3b squared, and then we're going to have a minus 2b, and then don't forget the plus 3b that was already located on the left side, and then everything here is equal to zero. We can combine some like terms, of course. We have a minus 2b plus a 3b. That just becomes plus 1b, so we might as well clean that up. And there we go. And now we have to solve this for b. So why don't we factor b out of this? So we'll have b times b squared minus 3b plus 1. This is set equal to 0. It would be wonderful if the expression inside the parentheses would factor for us. Doesn't look like it's going to, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Recall, before applying the quadratic formula, that we have to set each factor equal to 0. So we would have b equals 0 and then we would have b squared minus 3b plus one equals zero. Something interesting to note about the b equals zero, that's not gonna be actually one of our solutions because if you go back up, we will remember that the lower limit was already zero. So if we let b also equal zero, in other words, this upper limit right here, if that were equal to zero, then this entire integral 
would simply equal zero. And then the entire right-hand side would equal zero. We would be left with three equals zero, a rather strange result indeed. So we're not going to accept the answer that B is equal to zero. We're going to reject it, in other words. So we'll reject that. And now we have to solve this other equation using the quadratic formula. Here we have A equal to one, B equal to negative three, C equal to one. And then recall the quadratic formula would be, well, this is funny, isn't it? Because we're going to say B is equal to negative B, but those are actually different Bs. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So our B will equal negative B, which is negative 3. A lot of strange twists and turns here. Plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all divided by 2 times 1. This will simplify a little bit. We have b is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root. Let's see, underneath the square root, we've got negative 3 squared. That's just 9. 9 minus, well, this is just going to be 4 because 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. So 3 plus or minus 5 all divided by 2. And what's interesting is we get two answers because we have both the plus and the minus root here. So we could spread them out. We can say 3 minus the square root of 5 all divided by 2 or b is equal to 3 plus the square root of 5 all divided by 2. What's interesting about both of these values for b is that they're both greater than 0. You could check this on your calculator, but if you punch this into your calculator, you'll get an answer greater than 0. Same thing with this one. And therefore, we will keep them both. Because remember, the question even implied that there were two answers in a way, because it says find the numbers b. And so we'll also notice that the b has to be something greater than 0 because that would be an upper limit, a number that would be greater than the lower limit. The lower limit is zero, so our upper limit has to be larger than that. So again, both of these are greater than zero. They are both the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, no obligation to do so. I appreciate you watching regardless.